So well, hi everybody. Um, uh, oh, we're ready to go. <laughs> Did you want to? Tēnā koutou katoa, ko Karen Hanks and Oho. I'm Dr. Lua, born and bred, fourth generation woman. Um, I have a Bachelor of Creative Technologies from Toyoko Mai, majoring in arts. And this year I'm taking up postgraduate studies in leadership and professional mentoring. I have a long history and kind of notoriety in my hometown, partly due to the fact that I used to busk many years ago on the streets of Rotorua. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to say world famous in Rotorua. <laughs> but you know, I've been at the bottom and I'm now making my way to the top as a New Zealand mixed media artist and emerging creative leader. My earliest memories of art are of my mother, an illustrator, this is her art here, sitting cross-legged on the floor drawing her emotions out. I particularly remember the tortured landscape she drew around the time I was five years old when she was dealing with a lot of pain. You see, my mother taught me young that art was a way of seeing the unseen, of bringing demons outside yourself and trapping them on paper. My early art education was deeply focused around the monsters that lurked beneath the surface of everyday life. As a 14-year-old uh, girl, I attempted suicide, and although I was at the top of my form for science and English, then in quick succession my mother had a brain aneurysm which nearly took her from us, and I was sexually assaulted, and I went right off the rails, drinking to the point of ending up in intensive care multiple times and I quit school. But I don't tell you this for pity, just so you can see where I've come from and why I'm doing what I'm doing now. So I lived in the darkness and those monsters became my friends and I went through deep depression, which I never spoke about. But on the other side, there's always light. And in 2004, I had a major life shift. I turned to art, just like my mama taught me and found the therapeutic quality of crafting, painting, sculpting. So in 2010, when my life again went psh, um, I left it there and decided to create myself anew for myself and my children. So I took personal responsibility and through the new creation, I started telling brave stories of empowerment. I wrote music, I produced burlesque shows, I modelled, I produced huge installations and events. Basically, I lived so far outside my comfort zone that growth was inevitable. So by this time, I've managed to buy my own house for the kids and I. And I've worked in diverse settings, but I was passionate about so many things that I was scattered. Which is why um, I made the leap and went back to school in 2017. Today I'm three years into that five-year educational plan. I've refined my practice into a mixed media um, fine art collective of my creative interests and have multiple exhibitions under my belt, but I've, I've begun to make a name for myself as a public speaker and a bit of a social media personality. <clears throat> I'm currently renovating my um, workshop into a large art studio and exhibition space where I can hold art workshops, intimate art events and a small artist residency in the future. But what are my real passions? What do I really want to achieve with these tools and platforms? What do I believe in at the bottom of my heart and soul? I believe strongly that art is a way to know and develop who you truly are. I believe making art is a sacred act, that energy and emotion, art is energy and emotion made visible, that we're all responsible for our own realities by our small acts of creation every day. As the great Lao Tzu said, if you want to awaken all of humanity, first awaken all of yourself. The greatest gift you have to give is that of your own self-transformation. By transforming ourselves, we transform our families' lives and affect everyone we touch. They in turn transform their families' lives and we break into generational patterns which ripple far into the collective in our world's future. 
It always starts by discovering your monsters, and they're not always dark. Some of them are what's called a golden shadow, and they're hidden talents that we're running from for one reason or another. Find your driving beliefs about the world, and you can do that through creative practice. Um, so you can recognize them, see where they've come from, and find out what they have to teach us. So I've taken up my mum's mantle in a way as the monster hunter. My research has been deeply based in the comparatively new language of science as it meets ancient cultural wisdom. I've formed a contemporary understanding of enlightenment, self-empowerment, healing and growing through creative practice. Uh, I'll take, take this time now to showcase a few of my recent work. This is from my series Project Tarifa, also this piece I'm wearing tonight in bronze, which you can read more about on my website. This piece is called Confessions of Darkness and Light and contains real life statements gifted to me from everyday people of their struggles and the lessons that they've gained from me. Priestess, Enlightenment and Oracle are all sacred feminine wisdom figures, <coughs> two of which are actually on show currently at the Rotorua Arts Village for anyone interested in the exhibition And Again, which runs I think until the 22nd of February. Also, um, as a matter of interest, the artists are giving a live demo this Saturday. Broken here is currently in the No Shame, No Silence public collection, which will hopefully tour the country again soon. Te Ao Marama, shining a light on abuse within our system. I'm a bit of an artist, in case you can't tell. She's a vessel for a lot of my childhood uh, trauma, my inner child work, and through the sacred creative process I spoke about and vulnerable heart sharing, I was able to find a place of forgiveness and letting go. Thank you. Thank you.